Okay, so the acceleration due to gravity of the moon is one sixth that of the Earth. You have that represented with your little equation here. You have the gravity of the moon is equal to the gravity of the Earth divided by six. And then we got the actual values 9.8 meters per second squared divided by six is 1.63 meters per second squared. You want to know what effect, if any, that this would have on the period of the pendulum of length L. Okay, how would the period of the pendulum differ from an equivalent of one Earth? <clears throat> so um, you're asking for period. You want to find out what the period is. So it's good to know what the little equation for a period of a pendulum is. And the equation for the period of a pendulum can be derived by using um, you know, sine and cosine, but we're going to just go ahead and write it out here. It's very well known. You can find it in any textbook, um, but this is how it goes. The period represented by capital T of any pendulum is always gonna be represented by one full cycle, which is represented by two pi as a full cycle, multiplied by the ratio, the square root of the ratio of the length of the pendulum divided by the local gravity of wherever you're at. Now this can be on Earth, this could be the local gravity of the moon, local gravity of the sun, local gravity of Jupiter. Um, it's whatever. It can. This formula still holds no matter where you are in the universe. Um, so in your question here, we're given two values. You're given the two gravitational values. You have the gravitational value of the Earth, which I'm going to say G little e. And you called that, what, 9.81 meters per second squared. And you have the gravity of the moon, which is only one sixth of the gravity of the Earth. So it's like you take the gravity of the Earth and you divide that by six, which it says here 1.63. I'm going to trust those values. So looks like we have stuff to plug into our equation here except for L. We don't know what L is. L is undefined. And because they didn't give us what the value of L is, that tells us that our question is purely analytical. That means um, analytical. That means we just have to inspect it and see what happens. It means plugging in numbers and finding exact values for the, the answer isn't so much important as it is to plug in um, equations and stuff and, and just kind of analyze what is happens to this, e to this uh, period. And we'll just have to describe it based on what we know. So these values here, really, <coughs> they're nice to know, but they're not, they're not so important. That's a squared. Um, we don't have to worry about plugging in these values. What we would rather do is plug in these values, these like little mathematical equations. That's what's going to be important for the uh, question for analysis process. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. So this is just a general, general period formula in general that describes really anything. It's not until we plug in the values that we get the period of the pendulum uh, in, with respect to wherever it's at. So in this case, this is going to be the period of the pendulum on Earth and I'm going to plug in the Earth local gravity. See that G sub E? This would be the period of the pendulum here on Earth. This is how you represent it. Nothing significant. It looks exactly like this one, except it just has a little E here to designate that we are on Earth. But now let's do the one on the moon, T sub M. What's the period of the same pendulum if we were to move it to the moon? Well, we know that it's similar, it's gonna be G sub M for moon, but we know we can represent that with this little ratio here. So I'm just gonna do that real quick. Two pi square root of L, we don't know what L is, but instead of G sub M, I'm just gonna replace it with this ratio right here. So we got a ratio within the ratio and that's gravity of the earth divided by six. I'm going to go ahead and extend that down a little bit so we know that it's all underneath the square root. Um, <clears throat> so we know what to do when we have like a number divided by a fraction. 
we're going to reciprocate the bottom fraction and just multiply across the top. So what this becomes now is just going to be t sub m, the period of the moon, is equivalent to 2 pi square root. I have this L. I'm going to leave it over 1. I'm going to multiply it by the reciprocal of this denominator here. So that's going to be multiplied by 6 over g sub e, right? And this is still all underneath the square root. Um, what this becomes now is t sub m equals 2 pi. What's 6 times l? That's just going to be 6l, right? 6l all over 1 times the gravity of the Earth, which is just the gravity of the Earth. So this is the new equation. And this is what we want to kind of analyze and work with, because this will help us describe what's happening to the pendulum. Um, know that um, you don't really have to know the square root of 6 here. <clears throat> but um, how do I describe this in an easy fashion? Basically, we're going to split it apart. Um, I'm going to say 2 pi. I'm going to take the square root of 6, and I'm going to give it its own little square root thing, which is right here. See how I did that? And it's being multiplied towards this L over G sub E. So essentially, I just all I did was I took the square root of 6, and I slid it to the front. That way, it's its own like entity here. And then continuing doing that, oops, this is the gravity of the moon, right? Or the period of the moon. Um, I'm going to just move it all the way to the front. So it's going to be square root of 6 times 2 pi square root of L g sub e. All right? So once again, there's no magic that happened here. These are just two multiplications. I just took the square root of 6 individually and, and factored it out to the front, if you will. Mm, I didn't really factor, but I, I did kind of like slide it over. But this is, this is the equation we want to analyze. If you notice, though, this one right here is just this one, the period of, the, of what it would be on Earth, the pendulum on Earth. That's just simply t sub e, right? So we can rewrite this one last time, and we can rewrite it as the period of the pendulum on the moon is equal to the square root of 6 times the period of what the pendulum would be here on Earth. And this actually tells us a lot more than this one, even though these two are exactly the same equation. Um, this one is a lot more easy to analyze because what this says is like, okay, if I were to go to the moon um, and I can work this equation down that I'm only working with the periods, I can see that the, the, it, the, the period on the moon would change from the period of Earth by a factor of square root of six, right? It, it's actually greater than. So um, <clears throat> this value here, the square root of 6 times te is actually greater than just te by itself, meaning that the period on the moon is much larger than the period on Earth. How much larger? Uh, I don't know what the square root of 6 is. I think it's like, I don't know, like 2.45 or something. It doesn't really matter. What your question is asking is like, what effect would this have on the period if we were on the moon. And so <clears throat> uh, we find that it's actually larger. It'll have a longer period. Because of this statement right here, we will have a longer period on the moon. than we would on Earth. And uh, I hope that makes sense. Vice versa, if you started with a pendulum on the moon and you uh, took it over to the Earth, you would actually have a shorter period on the Earth. You would just solve this equation uh, vice versa. So like this one, you would just solve for TE. And you could say like, you know, divide by square root of 6, divide by square root of 6. 
you get Tm divided by root 6 is equivalent to Te. This, this would be if you were taking it from the moon to the Earth. And you'll find out that you have a shorter period here on Earth with the same pendulum. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. And I hope that wasn't too confusing. Thank <music> you.